Welcome back to our course on Access 2013 Advanced. In the previous section we looked at the student list in the student database and at how a macro was invoked from the student list to open the student details form either to modify the details of an existing student or to add a new student. Now virtually everything within that macro is very important and a lot of the features of that you'll use extensively as you develop macros in Access. We're left with one outstanding question and that one is going to be the one we deal with first in this section and this will in turn lead us into looking at the student details form itself. And the one that we left outstanding was the WHERE condition. The WHERE condition here is going to take a little bit of explaining. It involves an NZ function that baffles a few people, but also the syntax of the WHERE condition can also be a little bit strange as well until you understand exactly what's going on. However, before we actually look at that, I'd just like to point out one thing to you which is worth bearing in mind. You can basically do this kind of open form statement in either a macro or using VBA code and in principle the two of them can do all of the same sort of things but as an example of a fundamental difference between them that WHERE condition that you can see, they're the one we're going to look at in a moment in a macro can have a maximum length of 255 characters now 255 characters seems like quite a lot for a WHERE condition but I've certainly developed WHERE conditions that are longer than that, not many but I have in VBA then the wear condition can be 32k long so that's a very long wear condition indeed and sometimes some of those kinds of difference may dictate whether you use macros in a given situation or whether you write VBA code in this case of course the 255 characters we get with a macro is absolutely fine so let's plunge in and have a look at that wear condition now the first thing that may seem strange about that WHERE condition is it starts with two equal signs and you may think well that looks a bit strange but in fact if I click within that command and bring up the delineation the actual controls for the various arguments you can see that they're not actually two equals at all the WHERE condition equals is just a way of denoting the start of the WHERE condition control and then the control that actually holds that condition has contents that begin with a single equals and then the rest of the WHERE condition is what we're going to look at next. Now the WHERE condition is actually an equal sign followed by a string and the string in this case is the concatenation of two separate strings. The first string is the literal string id equals and the second string is the value of a function, the nz function. Now the first string is straightforward enough because it's just going to say open square brackets id close brackets equals and the id of course is the id of the student who we want to modify or of course we may be wanting to add a student. I'll come to that in a moment. The second part is a value for the NZ function. The NZ function is a very useful function in Access because basically what it says is I have two arguments. I look at the value of the first argument and if it's null I want to return the value of the second argument. So what this particular function does here is to say look at the ID. Now in this case the ID of course is the ID of the student selected in the student list. Now if the ID is 20 I'm just going to return the value 20. But if it's null I'm going to return the value 0 because 0 is the value of the second argument of the NZ function. So if I clicked new in the student list on the very last row, the one that corresponds to adding a student, the value of ID there is in fact null. So the NZ function for that value of null will return a value of 0 and my WHERE condition would read equals ID equals 0. So the string would be ID equals 0. Whereas if I'd selected a student, say the student with ID 30, the string would read ID equals 30. 
So that's basically how that weir condition works. And as with many of the other features of this macro, I think the use of the NZ function is one that you're likely to find very helpful throughout your use of macros and indeed VBA within Access 2013. So that pretty much tells you what happens when the student details form is opened and the WHERE condition will dictate which student is displayed. And we're now going to turn our attention to the student details form. But we're going to come back a little bit later on to look at a couple of other things on the student list. So here we have a view of the student details form. Note the title says FRM student details which isn't particularly neat but we have the name of the student here we have a number of commands we have a go to we have save a new email save as outlook contact and close and then in terms of the details of the student we have a sequence of tabbed pages and each page contains some of the information about that student now as we're going to see a little bit later on the way that the information on the tab pages is put together varies quite a bit. Some of the information is held in the student record itself. Some of it is held in other tables. And I'm going to talk about these tabbed pages a bit later, as I say. But let's go back to the main form first of all and just look at the way that the fundamentals of the form work. So I'm now looking at the property sheet for the student details form. If we look at the record source property, we see that the record source property is the query QRY students extended. If you look at the top left here in the form header, you can see that the field here, which is called auto title, has as its control source the function or the value of the function NZ student name untitled. And you'll know by now that what that means is that if the student name for the currently selected student isn't null, put the student name into this field. If it is null, put untitled into this field. Now we'll see untitled in a moment, but in terms of the student name, if you looked at the student's table, you'd see that there was no student name field in it. But within the query, the student's extended query, there is a student name field and it's defined as the concatenation of first name and last name. So although there is no student name field in the student's table, you'll see the student name appearing in this title position up here in the header, provided that you've got a first name and a last name. So that's a very good way, particularly when you've got one details form for amending existing students' details and for adding the details of a new student. It's a very good way of populating a field like that. Now what I want to do is to look at some more of the specifics of this student details form. You may notice these what look like labels along here, but they're actually command buttons. They're command buttons that have been formatted to look very flat and they add a certain style to this type of form but they are command buttons let's look at what one of them does save and new that's a pretty useful command to have on a details form like this one where you can make some changes or you can complete the addition of a new student in this case and then you can say save that away and give me a new one now let's look at how that actually works let's bring up the property sheet go to the event tab and look at the embedded macro. I won't need to go through this with you step by step because by now you should have a pretty good idea of what's going on. We've got an on error go to next that lets us con take control of any errors. We check whether any changes have been made. Is form dirty true? If it is, we save the current record. Then we just make sure that we haven't got an error. So if macro error dot number is not equal to zero, we'll give out a message box and stop the macro. And then we change the error handling back to on error go to fail. And then we say go to record. And where you have a detail form like this one where you're maintaining the records in a record set, in this case from the student extended query, you can just say go to record and in this case the record you want is a new record which means that it will go to the end of the particular data set in this case and get ready to add a new record and in addition to setting you up for a new record 
it says go to control and it tells you which control to put the cursor in in this case into the first name control so let's see that particular save and new in operation so I'm going to go into data entry mode now from the student list so I'm going to click on new ready to add a new student notice that the title of the student comes up as untitled for the reasons that we looked at just now now let me just put the basic details in that I need the minimum required to enter a student into the database so I'm going to need a first name and a last name I'll need to put a home phone number in I'll need to put in a student ID then I can select a level and a date of birth of course the date of birth I've got a date picker but I can just type the date in so having put in that minimum amount of information if I click on save and new what will happen is that this record will be saved provided I put in all of the required field and then I'll also be given a new empty student details form to enter save and new there we are and I'm ready to do another one now I'm going to look at one or two more of the macros that run from this student details form but as a general principle what I suggest you do with each of the forms in any of the sample databases from Microsoft is to take a look at the code that sits behind things like these command buttons because you can learn an awful lot from them good ideas of how to do things but as I say let's look at another couple of these buttons let's look at the email button another interesting one it's quite often very useful to be able to set up an email button so that people using the database base can send an email so having selected that button go to the on click event again it's an embedded macro we'll look at the macro and run through that I'm not going to worry too much about the error handling now which is pretty routine now you should be getting used to that but right in the middle you have this single action email database object and this is basically a command with a very large number of arguments and you can do all sorts of things pretty much everything you could do with sending a regular email so you can put in things like not only to who to send it to but copies blind copies you can put in the subject you can put in the message text now of course in your macro code you can either leave these blank which means that when the email message appears for the user they can fill them in or you can pre-populate them you can even pre-populate them with the message text itself and you can state here whether the user is allowed to edit the message or not you can specify a template file and so on the to the address of the person it's going to is built out of the student name concatenated with and then we build up the email address itself with a combination of if statements and the use of the NZ function so I'll leave you to work that one out if obviously you don't have an email address then you're going to have to leave the to argument there empty let's have a look at how that works in practice as well so let's start with one of the students that's got an email address say this one open that one Leclerc and click on email and up comes a pre-prepared email note we've got the subject field selected you can type in copies subject and so on but with the name and the email address in the normal format in the to field now let's try somebody without an email address let's try this one click on email in this case the email is still generated but it only puts the name in you've really got to put the email address in there as well it's a good idea for you to have a look at the macro that we looked at just now so that you can understand how the address gets put together in the two different cases now there are still a couple of other features on this student details form that I'd like to go through with you and then I'd like to return back to the student list to talk about one or two important options and features there but I'm going to do all of that in the next section, so please join me for that.